Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the cinema camera that is, you know, hot in everybody's mind is Panasonic S1H. So let's dive right into it. Now, this is first time a company is solely focusing a, a DSLR kind of body, a mirrorless kind of body as a video camera. Basically, it's a same form factor as any old camera that you had and it's 100% focused on video. So it is a full frame 35 millimeter uh, mirrorless system, which is $4,000, which is you may find it expensive, but it is not that expensive when you're talking about video cameras. Like from a video camera's point of view, it's like bare minimum 25% cheaper compared to other heavier options. It's like free. So it's, it is expensive if you are looking from Sony A7 Mark III, but uh, even A7 R3, uh, R Mark IV version, it is more or less the same price. So you have to understand the price is not too high. And it, in terms of lens mount, like what options do you have is L mount alliance lenses. Basically, uh, Leica already had a lens mount. So three companies came together, Leica, Panasonic and Sigma. They're all uh, making collaborative effort to create this ecosystem. Now, again, do you trust this ecosystem? That's up to you because as of now, there is not enough lens option. You have a very long list of lenses for Leica, but they are uh, stupidly expensive. And in terms of Panasonic, Panasonic only has few lenses options. So it's up to you. Do you trust this system? Because it could happen. Let's say uh, this camera starts to catch on and things, uh, you know, starts to actually become popular. And then suddenly you will have hundreds of people making hundreds of lenses for this company, uh, this lens mount. As of now, it is uncertain. So you have to be thorough, uh, thoroughly aware of that. So uh, we have a very simple axiom here. Basically, do one thing and do it well. So Panasonic took a very capable uh, S1 camera and they are like, okay, let's add video function to it. And that's their sole function. So the biggest uh, thing you will notice that it is the first mirrorless camera, like quote and quote mirrorless, because our video cameras are technically mirrorless anyway, is like, which has a uh, fan inbuilt. Now you have to understand this, like, uh, in terms of uh, when you're talking about uh, sensor and all that sensors do heat up a little bit if you are reading it but they do not uh, they are not the source of heat like they will heat up but not as, as a like you know heater but your processor that is uh, like you know doing all the computation that is a heating element basically all your battery power is going uh, there and it's being consumed by it so it does heat up and it because it, everything is like you know so tightly packed it will heat up the sensor which will reduce your signal to noise ratio and like it's it's a cascade system so you will have overheating so to make sure that things does not overheat video cameras like uh, red epic alexa mary and all those puppy they generally have big fans like they have heat sinks that are more or less the same size as computer processor heat sink so this is the first time that kind of like a super high-end feature that is generally found on like twenty thousand dollar cameras and all that that has been put into four thousand dollar camera so this is the first biggest change you will say because in terms of size and all that it's more or less exactly the same as s1 is just a bit thicker 100 gram heavier so it's not even that heavy so uh, that gives us a true advantage where even though you can say hey sony also has like you know unlimited recording but you have to know that sony has unlimited recording in a cropped sensor camera uh, so far i am not clear did any full frame does that so that translates to like even in APS-C, if you keep recording over time it will heat up so let's say you have directly usb powering it over the like around two to three hours you will get that heat up alert here you won't is the fan will ramp up so that's a very significant advantage so let's say you are doing live streaming where you are like uh, using this camera and you know it has been going on for two to three hours many live streams do go that long in those scenarios this puppy is like i got this no problem i got this so that's a very significant advantage in terms of io basically input and output uh, they have a dedicated time sync input which is really important and useful for any place where you have multiple devices to sync up like uh, audio recording station uh, basically portable recorders multiple cameras it is absolute it is a must to have they taken care of that uh, it has you know normal mic input if you are using something basic it got that you have a headphone out if you are doing monitoring it's got that it has usb power delivery specification so usb c power delivery so if you have an apple charger or a very powerful phone charger because uh, power delivery specification is built for 100 watt your mobile generally does not require 100 watts so you may find like you know your mobile charger can charge it up if it's not uh, running but if you want to charge it while it's running you have to have something a bit more beefy they do provide the uh, system in box so either you can like you know shut it down and charge it if you have a power bank that is b uh, meant for like high power output power delivery output it can handle that so you can charge it while running it and has full size hdmi output now that is very critical 
if you have full size hdmi the cable uh, the port does not break that quickly uh, generally the cable break now in case of mini the cable generally people break it uh, like you know in a few months so it's quite uh, frustrating so they have taken care of that it has dual uhs2 this is one decision that i am not happy with because i will explain it why i am not that happy with it but it does have dual uhs2 system same as sony uh, basically a a7 mark 4 uh, a7r mark 4 same same as that and it does allow multiple recording option which are quite amazing this is same uh, options they had in their uh, handycam lineup where you can do marathon recording basically uh, you can put two blank cards uh, the moment one fills up the second card will be used you can take it out live swap it and put a blank card in and then it will keep recording so you can continuously record as long as you want so that is quite amazing for a quote and quote uh, cheap camera and it has a top lcd which has a thorough like it, it is a big lcd it's not a clock lcd like a, you know casio and all that so it does allow you a lot of information and it has tally light which is very important for video production so basically it will show whether it's recording or not because let's say for some scenario you had a scenario where a person is uh, in the front and there is a like you know it's a room scenario you don't have the flip out screen for any reason let's say it's like you have a cage mounted or things of that nature it has a tally light so if recording stops for any reason let's say card runs out battery is low or anything like that the light will go uh, you know blink so you will know like okay it is not working so you don't have to rely on the screen itself and it has tally like ba both back and front so it's quite a minute thing but it is like priceless for uh, basically cinema industry and big buttons again okay? that is one good thing about panasonic panasonic does know how to make a ergonomic camera and they have finally bypassed the patent of canon because canon does have a patent on a flip out screen on full frame they do not possess the patent on flip out itself you can do it however you want so uh, fuji did the aps-c flip out that's why they have fuji has like this that is why sony cannot do like this sony has to do like this otherwise they will directly conflict with the patent of fuji now what panasonic did is very simple they are like okay let's put a double hinge system so they have hinge number one hinge number two that's why they bypass it so as of now other than canon this is the only camera available in market that has the luxury of flip out screen which is quite priceless for vloggers and all that and you small time youtubers or even corporate shooters so like you know if you don't have too much luxury of extra screens and all that the ability to frame yourself while looking in the camera it's quite amazing so you can see and it has ibus now ibus uh, think of this there are only three companies that can do ibus properly first is uh, basically panasonic best of the best second is nikon nikon is good because it has like a very la uh, tr large travel room sony is third but again you have to understand there is no other competitor so if canon started to develop this technology properly they also may end up in a better scenario because sony has to does not have enough travel room and on top of that their refresh rate is not high enough so ibus in terms of anybody who's using this they're like this is amazing and given the fact that l mount alliance does support uh, image stabilization in the lens itself if you have a lens that has image stabilization, both of them will work together so it's mind-bogglingly awesome so you do you may not even have to worry about like you know uh, jerry rigging a you know gimbal system or a glide cam so that's a quite amazing thing so that's the whole point and it has tons of options that you may not even think of it takes years of it out. they had one goal and they focused thoroughly on it the only difference between like this and s1 is basically this one if you take photos you will have a bit of a softness to it not too much it won't be like okay i cannot print this one out uh, compared to s1 but because it does not have anti-aliasing filter it is bit diff bit smoother benefit of without having that anti-aliasing filter is that you will not have more more effects which is a, a flat out video killer like if you make a video which has more people will reject it so are there any side effect well uh, the biggest side effect even though they are aiming for cinema industry the first thing that many cinema uh, cinematographer will like yeah i'm not touching this camera simply because it does not have internal record, raw recording now at 4000 at 5000 you are getting many dedicated cinema camera which has internal raw recording which includes black magic uh, so you have to understand that at that point people are like dude no and why they haven't done that like at first i thought it was processor but then i realized processor is cooling element so it cannot be processor limited that is the problem of uh, basically uhs2 sd card slot they had to use xqd they did not do that so that that is why they do not have internal raw recording now for many people it does not make a difference for some people it is like if they have to have raw recording basically they do so so heavy color correction or they do such a heavy green screening effect and all that you can do green screening on a very cheap camera but on a high-end camera you can really take care of the edges and all that for those scenarios raw become a priceless tool so for those people they like they will look at it it's like no raw i'm out so 
and you can do raw output thankfully it does have 10 bit output which sony does not do uh, they do have 10 bit output and they can utilize any shotgun inferno monitor or things of that nature and they are working with the company itself to make a completely uh, closed ecosystem where they can do a uh, very high bit rate you have to understand it cannot allow you to do 6k because hdmi is limited to 4k so as of now if they wanted basically 6k output uh, given the fact that there is no recorder for it so it, it might have been a mute they had to use display port they used hdmi port so that's why they are limited they cannot do uh, basically a 6k output they can only do 4k output that is not the limitation of panasonic or the only way the panasonic could have bought uh, you know bypassed this is if they have directly started using display port so uh, basically no internal raw recording is a turn off for many people they won't even touch this camera another aspect now this is quite frustrating is like it is not a 4k 60 frame per second full frame camera so if you are doing vlogging and all that and especially in outdoor scenario you want that 60 frame per second for smoothing the moment and it has ibus it has uh, autofocus again not the greatest but it has autofocus so in those sort of scenario you want this 4k 60 frame which is available now in action cams and again i could understand that when they were saying like you know s1 will heat up if they try to read that you have a cooling fan you have a very big system why the heck you're not doing that like you have 6k output but you do not have 4k 60 frame per second so it's quite frustrating so but you will like hey i check this picture it has 4k 60 frame. yes the moment you will do that it will do the crop to uh, super 35 uh, millimeter now the reason why most people bypass this is like our brain has the desire or necessity to like bypass everything so we read 35 we are like full frame 35 like it's super 35 it's very small it's like APS-C. So many options, like many video options that you will be like, whoa, this is amazing, this is that, or this is that. Please pay attention to the spec sheet and you will find out most of them are in APS-C system. So basically you are buying a four frame, uh, full frame camera, which does not have full frame capabilities. It's like, yeah, I have full frame. If you are 6K, 30 frame per second. Uh, you cannot go higher than that. And you will be like, okay, I don't need 6K. I only want to enjoy 4K. You're like, okay, 4K, 30, awesome, full frame. 4K, 60, crops. So that is quite frustrating. It's like, at this point you can't justify that you are saying this is a you know like a cinema camera you are saying this like it's a dedicated video camera you have cooling fans into this so that's quite uh, frustrating so many people flat out really turned on by these two factors it's like uh, most of the op video options fancy video options are in a crop mode and uh, the rolling shutter is also not that great so the only way to bypass the rolling shutter on a full frame is to have a global shutter because you can't read it otherwise you have to invent some technology like sony has for a9 series where they have like three parallel readouts so other than that like flat or many people will be like yeah i do a lot of color correction without raw i'm not touching this other people will be like hey 4k 60 frame per second in full frame that's the whole point of it it's not there i'm out other people will be like hey wait a minute i thought this and i'm morphic does full frame readout does not do that you have to understand like you have, please spend time on the video spec sheet you will be surprised like how many things are in the crop mode so the final question like should you buy it or not well for many people come let's say the first comparison you will think of is black magic 6k for many people uh, panasonic system is a much more complete system right now if you buy this basically uh, black magic 6k you will not be satisfied with this because it is very incomplete the biggest hurdle with this camera is the battery life it is remarkably poor it's like are you serious like you're making a video camera that does not have like you know battery life even for one hour reliably like people are saying hey i get one hour 30 minutes another person is saying hey uh, mine died in 40 minutes and again they, they are not making the battery themselves they are utilizing someone else's battery that is the reason they do not have the absolute control needed for a good reliable battery reading panasonic does not suffer from that for many people that alone is like hey dude i want my camera to turn on and it's like if the, it says the battery is there for two hours it should work for two hours so flat out many people will reject this again not everybody needs raw like youtubers don't need raw unless they are like you know doing some extra uh, fancy color work and all that uh, so for many people that alone is like dude good battery life i'm done for other people it's like it has great ibus like flat out there is no competition about panasonic ibus so many people like yeah dude i'm sold and it's a much more complete option so you may understand this this is a video camera but if you are trying to use this in full sunlight outdoors you will realize the value of electronic viewfinder it does not have it so either you have to buy an external e electronic viewfinder or you have to buy external monitor which is bright enough thousand nit monitors now this monitor is quite bright not bright enough but in 
Panasonic, you don't have to worry about it. If like the monitor is not bright enough, you can directly uh, put your eye to it and enjoy. So in those sort of scenario, uh, Panasonic appears as a much more complete ecosystem. It's like I, I take this camera out, I'm done. Only thing I have to do is attach audio system, which you have to do here. But here, many people like who are serious with this, the first thing they're like, okay, add extra battery system, add uh, uh, basically image stabilization. It does not have any internal system. So you have to put a very serious image stabilization because many prime lenses don't have image stabilization. And because they are not uh, like, you know, as licensed by Canon, they cannot get the Canon uh, lens image stabilization to work as effectively as Canon would get that. Again, it's a locked out proprietary system. So Panasonic does not suffer from that. So Panasonic get best image stabilization, electronic viewfinder, reliable battery life. For many people, flat out for those things alone, they're like, yeah, I'm not touching this. That is happy for me. Now, the biggest hurdle at this point in time, uh, the one limiting factor of uh, Panasonic is the lame autofocus. They do not have an autofocus where you can be like, record i'm done like you do not have like you know push the button and forget about it you do not have the reliability of dual pixel autofocus you do not have the precision of uh phase detect or autofocus uh phase detect yeah phase detect autofocus so that is the only limiting factor if they have figured this out if they figure it out like by future updates and all that again physics does not support that by definition contrast dip uh, will be always slower than all those uh, you know other options so let's say they figure out somehow magically they figure out the artificial intelligence and all that jazz uh, if the autofocus becomes reliable this is a very capable camera flat out it will kill this like even though uh, that camera is like 45% uh, more expensive people will not touch this because like dude, this has a third party lens mount because again, Canon lens mount and it's a full frame Canon lens mount on an APS-C sensor. Why? Why? So like uh, Blackmagic 4K was amazing. Blackmagic 6K is not as amazing as 4K because the cost has gone up. The lens mounting ad, uh, options have gone down. Like you, you cannot put any lens mount you could with a 4K option. So lens mounting going down, other things like that. So there are reasons for, to, for you to choose uh, Panasonic, but you have to understand, does it match your need? Because many people will buy this camera. Canon C200 for internal recording and inbuilt ND. For those reasons alone, people might be like, hey, I'm gonna go with Canon. So that's up to you. Please understand your needs before you choose your camera. What do you need and why do you need it? Like I'm telling you, like for if you want just I take it out the camera and I just want to shoot, this is not a good suit for you. Like a Panasonic would be better suit for you. If you like, hey, I want to take it out and I don't want to worry about like buying ten thousand dollar ND filters, this is good for you. So you have to understand, please understand your need. There is no perfect camera. You have to understand your needs does it align with this camera buy it if it does not align don't buy it so this was my presentation on panasonic uh, s1h i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i would urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching